Repeat what you just said. I feel like a cancer patient. Why? Why? Just, Be- just the, 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 hair? Sh- the shaved head and the hat is just like the whole, yeah, the hair. <laughs> hey, um, you know, the hair grows very fast at, at that length. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Right? I, it's I'm, it's I'm already committed, probably dude. like. I'm committed to keeping it short for, for at least a month. Oh, good. Good. I thought you were growing it out again. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm in. I'm in it to win it, man. I, I, uh, my friend said I have a, a very like badass look if I stop smiling so much. No, you need to smile, Sean. I, you have a great. You smile. know, women That's don't like it. it when you tell them to smile. <laughs> that is true. That is true. That is true. You know Does that? it? So, so if uh, women tells uh, a man to smile, is that okay? Well, there was a video that was going around the internet of women telling men to smile. And it was really cute. They like really caught them by surprise. Why do you think it works for men, but then for women it's offensive? I, I mean, I think I know. Well, yeah, why don't you just handle this one? <laughs> You're scared to go there, uh, be- <laughs> because um, I think men have been telling women what to do forever, and yeah. so, and then also when you tell a woman to smile, it's almost like it's almost like saying "be cute," right? It's that thing. Yeah, and that she's, it's not, it's, it's not enough. She's got to do more. Right, than right. what she's already doing. If a woman tells a man to smile, it's all, it can almost come off as a compliment. Like, well, I notice and, you, you should yeah, smile. Yeah, they're getting noticed. You have a great they're, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. getting noticed. And I, I heard that, like, just, yeah, just even saying hi to it. Like, some men are just not used to getting attention from women. For the most part, they kind of feel. <laughs> right, I've heard that right. they just kind of feel invisible. So just like looking at Anything. them and smiling, yeah, will yeah. like make their week. You know. Yeah. I think I think guys are having a hard time. I mean, I think we're all having a hard time, but I think men apparently like yeah, there are more male suicides. They mm. men are repressing their emotions. They're not mm-hmm. able to connect. Um, I actually just posted something right now about how defensive men get when their female partners try to talk to them about anything mm. and that because they have a an ego that is so fragile and they have to protect it at all costs that they just can't get out of themselves yeah um what's your experience with with like vanessa bringing stuff up to you i get defensive <laughs> you get defensive yeah um i think i'm better wait i'm trying to jesus am i am i really loud no, you're good. Okay. Um I I uh I try not to be defensive, but I find myself defensive. Um I think there is a lot of men right now who are uh confused with identity. I think um uh men right now are very activated and they don't know what to do with it. So I think it's coming out in defense. Uh also men don't, you know, Men don't like call other men and talk about stuff, and so I think a lot of men feel alone. Um, yeah, there's like, uh, I mean, okay, so a takeover is not what's happening, but I think a lot of a lot of men feel that way. Mm. What you know, what I'm saying are, are well, yeah, yeah, I don't think that's happening, but if I, I feel like a lot of men who are especially old school feel like they're going to lose their footing, their position, that women are going to take over, and that's. That's not what women want. Like, you know, what what women want is generally equality. Yeah. I mean, I guess I shouldn't speak for all women, but yeah. Well, I think men who hold more power, uh, if they allow equality, they will have to give up some of their yeah. power to make yeah. room. Right. Yes. There isn't enough room for women if they don't step down in some way. And so it does kind of feel like it's threatening to everything that they have already or that they've accumulated. Yeah. I mean, just take something as simple as uh, the distribution of domestic labor and how it's been unfair pretty much, you know, (laughs) forever until recently where now uh, people are saying, or everyone's saying, like, look at this, you know, uh, women are um, doing everything. I mean, men might be mowing lawns. There's, there's, you know, all the gender, gender norms and stuff. But uh, um, in the house, dishes, laundry, all that. Um, Childcare. 
childcare. Yeah. And so all the emotional labor. Oh yeah, absolutely. Dealing with a touchy, sensitive, uh, ego, you know, fragile ego male partner that you have Mm -hmm. to like tiptoe around. I think, I don't think we're talking about like just how emotionally and cognitively exhausting that is to always have to do the, all the, the like math equations of like how to, how to be around a fragile and defensive male partner. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be tough, man. I'm looking at myself and I I know I could have, uh, I could, um, you know, for for me, love and intimacy and connection is, is kind of foundational. Um, and if I don't have that, I could definitely be, um, drifting and disconnected and kind of, uh, um, pouty and, and, uh, I don't know. I, I, if I don't feel, uh, connected to my partner in that way, uh, the house kind of crumbles for me. And so I'm, I'm working on not allowing that to happen. Yeah. You know, that's interesting. I mean, I'm single, right? So I don't have that. I don't have to like walk. I don't have to like even consider what my impact is on my partner because I don't have one. And I also feel like there's a part of me that's not growing relationally because I don't have a Mm. partner because I don't have a mirror, someone who knows me, someone who knows the the stories, the patterns, all the experiences that come up on a day to day when you're living in and co parenting with a partner that forces these moments of intimacy and right. self-awareness and growth. Like I don't have any of that. Well, I wouldn't say you're not growing though, because you're also doing a lot of other things. Uh, that's not, that's, that's one department of growth, but there's also so much more, you know? Yeah, for sure. But I, I do yeah. feel that relationally, um, I'm, I'm not, maybe I, I'm not really going deep. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. growing some muscles though. <laughs> you're going muscles <laughs> and uh, an edgier look. Uh, an edgy, an edgy your look, yeah. Yes. Hey, we started on a very like, uh, like a very serious topic, very yeah. serious note. Yeah, we have range, man. Hopefully, hopefully, I don't want to be a, uh, um, a one trick pony. Is that yeah. that's old? That's very old. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, I gotta tell you something. Last week we talked all about me. You know, I was like, I'm not doing so well. And then you kind of, you were, you were really there for me. And I, and I was like, I didn't even ask John how he's doing. <laughs> I, I don't even know how you're doing. I don't, I don't feel, I don't feel, I, I didn't feel that. Um, but I, I don't want to ask. <laughs> so last week I asked about you and you're like, you know, kind of grayed out, whatever. And uh, uh, I, I'm a, I was afraid that I would show up and you would ask how I was doing because that would be my answer today is, uh, Dude, I woke up this morning and I just, I just feel like a fucking wilted flower. I don't feel stepped on. Like I'm, you know, the flower's still alive, but it's, it's wilted. The petals are kind of, um, you know, it's, it's not uh, standing up, uh, facing the sun and uh, enjoy. It. I just feel like, uh, I just feel flat, man. I feel yeah. kind of discouraged. Nothing's, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Great out. I heard great, great out, out, man. It's like. That's kind of a wild expression. I like it. I, you know what I feel like? The uh, spinning cursor on your computer screen when it's um, when things aren't downloading. <laughs> you know what they call that? What? The wheel of death. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's very dramatic. It's very dramatic, man. Yeah, I feel like the wheel of death. Uh, um, what's, what's happening? What do you think's underneath all that? Um... I mean, to be uh, uh, completely honest with you, um, I, f- I feel uh, slightly a little disconnected from my partner. Uh, we didn't get into a fight or anything, but um, probably a lot of my own stuff. And then, and then, uh, man, I have this thing, man. I, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I'm bi- bipolar. Uh, I, cause my dad was like this, where um, when he was happy, uh, he was cloud. He was on cloud nine, and he he was so fun to be around, charismatic, and and then um, then when he was sad, the sky was falling. And uh, he was a miserable fuck. And so um, I have a, a, a hint of that where uh, if things are going good, you know, and um, yeah, I, I, when I'm happy, I'm happy. And then when I'm down, I'm just uh, the wheel of death. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. There, there's no reason. There's no like specific, like something, something didn't happen. 
or something. Yeah, it, it was not like uh, something happened. Now I'm down because of it. Um, sometimes life just grates me out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm curious. Well, for, okay, two things. First of all, I'm I got a little teary eyed when you sort of like shared how you're feeling because a I feel privileged that you would share that with me. Mm. And then B, it's actually really nice to see a man say like, hey, I'm, I'm like not doing well. You know, I'm kind of having a hard time. Yeah. Is, this is like what we need more of, right? Like people being vulnerable. And it's cool. You're doing it just to me. Like it's just me and, and you talking, but then a bunch of people are going to hear this. Yeah. So anyways, I was touched Thank by, you. Your, by your vulnerability and your willingness to share. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I feel lonely, man. I feel lonely. And, uh, um, you know, I've been, I got into therapy and you know, I'm starting to do that again. Uh, I know you've been doing it forever. Um, but kind of, uh, you know, the ex is, is it, how do you say that word? Existential. Existential. Yeah. Kind of like this whole, you know, what's it all about? What's the point? Like these big kind of big questions. Um, and then also my life can get monotonous. Um, maybe yours too. Uh, you know, just making videos for better help. And we got podcast, two podcasts and retreats and all of that. Um, I don't know, man. You feel like you're on a treadmill? A little bit, yeah. yeah. So the the biggest kryptonite for me is uh, when life gets gets monotonous, and I feel like I'm on a treadmill. Uh, man, I have no endurance for that. So, yeah, I wonder if the solution is to develop endurance, or is it to like shake things up? Because I feel like you you probably shake things up pretty pretty often. Yeah, shake things up, get into your body. Um, get out of the house, go move, you know, all the stuff that you do as well. Right. I know you're part of a running club, get on my motorcycle, engage with people, all, all the, all the basics. Are you avoiding anything? Oh shit. The plot thickens. Well, the the first question I had was what are you and Vanessa not talking about? Which we, we don't have to be public about about that stuff we've already talked about whether it's appropriate or not but i'm wondering if there's something you're avoiding i know well, I am. well one of the things i'm learning about vanessa um so what i used to do in my previous relationships uh is i would um talk about everything i felt so like it was almost like uh uh i thought that's what being vulnerable meant is be completely transparent saran wrap and then i realized oh wait there's actually a responsibility in being vulnerable and you don't just you don't just spill the beans. You don't just talk about something just because you feel it. Uh, you think about how that's going to impact the other person and the relationship. And um, is it even necessary to talk about, right? So uh, that's something I'm learning with Vanessa is um, what is important enough to discuss and also what is not. Um, and also with Vanessa, when I say, hey, um, can we talk? <laughs> I, see, I see panic in her eyes. It's not something that she's comfortable with doing. Uh, she tends to swing a little more avoidant. You know, to have having conversations about relationships, um, probably in her eyes feels like, oh, you know, what's wrong now? Um, so yeah. I'm being more careful about what, what we talk about, what we don't, how much of it is mine. Uh, Self-soothing, you know, that's a big word for me. Yeah. Something I need to do. Yeah. Is the Korean spa helping? Yes. The Korean spa helps tremendously, actually. Yes. Korean spa um minus the getting scrubbed down with a brush i hear that happens in, in korean that's like spas. the best part of the korean spa i i have not done that I'm, i avoid korean spas because uh uh lots of just balls in your face oh because everyone's naked and and Dude. mostly they're older men like you know 70s and just you just see testicles everywhere and you go into a bathhouse or yeah that's a korean spa is a bathhouse yeah, but bathhouse is like a San Francisco style bathhouse. Oh no no no! So there's uh there's ice and jacuzzi and sauna, but um, a lot of because you you have the option to go naked, and most people are naked. They're like old old Korean businessmen. Man. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, maybe that's just like too close to home. You know, that's what you'll look like in twenty thirty years. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not homophobic. It's, it has nothing to do with uh, it. Just, I don't. No, of I just. Not. I don't want to just want to see eighty year old naked eighty year olds around. I don't Except know. For, yeah, you don't like your own balls touching your leg. Other than that, I don't want that, it to be a before and after shot. You know, like <laughs> me before and then that, and seeing the future. And yeah, um, I will say uh, just to go back to you know not divulging everything. I used to to go to a lot of AA meetings, and uh, there were people there that would just sort of like they just dump. The trauma dump. All yeah, over. yeah, we, yeah. We call yeah. it puking on your shoes. So this guy just like puked on my shoes. Oh, know, like, yeah, yeah. And so I think it's important to like step back a little bit, be like, okay, what am I feeling? 
is this feeling, you know, is this like an old story? Is this historical? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? What's the story it's trying to tell me? Um, And that we don't have to bring everything to our partners, especially if you lean more anxious, like you're going to want to lead towards, you're going to want to lean towards co-regulating with somebody. Sure. Sure. And you were talking about And then if your partner's avoidant, that repels them, that flips a magnet very fast. Yeah, exactly. And so that, yeah, that's, that's, that's their kryptonite. Um, And so sometimes self, self soothing, I think it's just a really good toolkit to have because your partner or the person that you need to co-regulate with isn't always available. Right. If you're spinning out and your partner's in a business meeting or a board meeting, like you, they're not available to you. you and and they shouldn't, they shouldn't always be available. Correct. They shouldn't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you, you shouldn't be dependent on their availability, whether it is a uh, emotional availability or, you know, intimate or whatever. Um, the, the dependence of that, I think can get unhealthy. Yeah. yeah. I, I like, uh, I have a, I just want to s- I like want to provide entertainment and distraction for you. I wish I lived in LA and then we can go <laughs> do stuff. And I appreciate your heart, man. It sounds sincere. And, uh, um, I, I, I like that. Uh, I like that we're friends, you know, I like that we're friends. I like that we're doing this, but I like that we're friends, uh, first and that friendship is new. And, um, we're not just talking about like doing better, but also, um, you know, as men, just, opening up and hanging out supporting each other listening championing each other's stories all that you know i feel very like touched by this conversation yeah right <laughs> hey I think, <laughs> I think you and i just need to cry today probably oh man i mean uh i'm going to cry this week i'm I'm leaving in a couple hours to to the anger management um retreat oh what's this what's this anger management retreat remember i told you i went and like i like whacked some foam cubes oh, with a right, baseball right. bat and i killed yeah, my yeah. mom and and we <laughs> cried and yelled and screamed no anyways i'm going to a whole retreat of this for five days it's not anger management it's emotional processing oh wow yeah um, so 20 of us five days um just going through like group experiences exercises um it's a practice called core energetics i don't really know much about it um is, is like, it co-ed or is it just men it's co-ed yeah it's co-ed nice. um and so and you you take what you're like you uh take what's happening for you like with within you and you bring it to the group and so mm. there's group dynamics and yeah there's a couple facilitators and um so yeah i'm going to be crying and getting angry and maybe hopefully feeling joy and all sorts of stuff for the next five days you know i haven't cried uh like really cried hard i i think in a long time um but i cried this week i cried this week uh uh i went out with my mom and and she told me that uh when we first came to america she left uh me and my brother in korea for a year and uh logically it's like oh yeah that makes sense you guys came here to 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 make money and you can afford to you know they're getting two dollars and 75 cents an hour working at a 7-eleven kind of thing um and so they had no money for child care so they left me and my brother for uh for a year and uh that that would that didn't make me emotional i just kind of took it information and she was just saying it kind of like like the weather or like you know reading a menu and then then i came home man and i was and i started thinking what if Vanessa and I left Logan for a year? Like we went to Europe or something. The, and, and, and I didn't, and I think Logan would, would, would um, do her best to like, Oh yeah. You know, but then I think the confusion, and then I start, started thinking about the attachment at that age at like three, four or five um, and how confusing that could be for a child. And then, uh, then I started crying and then I started thinking about, um, you know, me at three bull haircut, uh, parents left for a year, doesn't know what's going on, and you know, like just trying to cope. Uh, and then I started thinking about how that event must have impacted me as an adult, and I'm sure it has, you know. Or, or also, how was it for them? Can you imagine having to make that decision, like you and, yeah. you and Vanessa? I mean, going to Europe for a year is different than like moving to America to like make it. Sure, and you're right. To provide right. a better. It's right. like if you were moving somewhere for logan to have a better life yeah racism also you know late 70s they were in columbus georgia in the late 70s uh Jesus. working at a 7-eleven pretty much wow um, yeah so they made big sacrifices as well yeah no facetime and for you no facetime no. no 
Um, but then, yeah, I wonder what that, I mean, do you have an abandonment wound? Maybe. I, I mean, I don't know. I, 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 I don't, I have a feeling that that was the beginning that laid the tracks for, um, my, my attachment style, ancient being anxious or, or abandonment or, you know, whatever. Yeah. I mean, how could it not at that age, you know? Uh, impossible to not have it impacted you in some way. Yeah. Like logically, I don't think so. But like, I think my, my body and it, I, I think from three to seven is like the most tender. I mean, you're just forming as a being. And so then if your parents, who is your primary, uh, they leave for a year. Uh, you could be with grandparents and uncles and stuff, but um, it has to shift something in you. What were you crying about? I started imagining uh, Vanessa and I leaving leaving Logan and what that mm. would be like for her. And then, of course, you know, just fucking tears. Because <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. when I think about myself, I don't get that sad. I don't remember much of it. Uh, but when I think about my us doing it to my daughter, that's what that's what you know. Well, that that triggered it, right? And then maybe yeah. you were able to kind of put yourself in Logan's shoes. Yes, and it wasn't like her being sad. It was her being confused. That's yeah. what made me cry, you know? Like, what's yeah. happening? That's really sweet. Yeah. Hey, man, I just got to gotta say, I'm really curious uh, what the dining experience of the Sizzler is these days. Uh, it's gone down. It's gone down. It's not <laughs> as good. Uh, it's not as magical. We have more options today than in the 80s. Um, Sizzler and Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut was not, before it turned into a fast food chain, it was a sit-down restaurant. Oh, yeah. And uh, in the 80s, Sizzler and Pizza Hut was like, I mean, that was a shit. When we, we went to Sizzler, I mean, it was like Disneyland. Because you can get like a steak with crisp cut grill patterns on it and a salad bar. All you can eat. You know, in Korea, bananas are imported. They're very expensive. So to go somewhere and you get as many bananas as you want, that's like next. I don't know what that would be equivalent to here. Wait, Sushi. Sorry. They have all you can eat bananas at Sizzler? I mean, they have tons of fruit and you could go up as much, as many times as you can. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're not, you're not grabbing a bunch of bananas. You're, 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 you're they're all chopped up probably. But okay. It's like a fruit bowl or fruit salad or something. You know what? It would be equivalent to today. You and I going to a, a like a sushi bar and it's endless. Oh, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Have you been to Japan? No. I want to oh, go. Oh, man. I want to go. Dude. I haven't been to Korea. I haven't been to Japan. The You haven't been to Korea? No. Last time I was I... there, my parents left me for a year. Yeah. Well, you weren't there. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, yeah. You haven't been back to... No, I never Why would you want to go back? That's just like bad memories. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's different now, man. I mean, I, I think when I was uh, in Korea, it was like a village, war stricken poverty. And then uh, companies like Hyundai and, and all. now it's like, I mean, Korea is like Tokyo. Yeah. Seoul. Yeah. Seoul. Hey, man, I went to, uh, speaking of food in Japan, and I went to a Japanese barbecue place last week. Oh, those are good. Um, 40 bucks, all you can eat per person. Oh. Two hours, you have two hours. Oh, they give you a time limit? Yeah, so it's like a heating contest. <laughs> yeah, but two hours is a long time. And that it, is. We ate so much meat. Um, and you got to eat, you have to finish it all before the time's up. Otherwise they charge you like a per weight of the food that's left. Yeah. Over. Yeah. But man, that was really fun. Yeah. Was it good? It was good. Yeah. It was really Do you good. you go to Korean barbecue? You've been to Korean barbecue. KBQ? Yeah. Uh, I haven't well, in a long time, but I used to in the Bay area in San Francisco. Yeah. With like, where you cook it up the meat, you cook it on the fire. Yeah. And you've got like social. the billion little uh, plates. Panchan. Yep. Yeah. Panchan? Panchan. It's called Panchan. Yeah. 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 Dude. It's all about yeah. the Panchan. I can't wait. I can't wait. We're going to do that in November or December or something. Yeah, for sure. Okay. A couple things. Should we, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Yeah. Let's start this podcast. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. So manopause is called andropause, by the way. Oh. Yeah. I got a lot Wh of comments about that. Oh, because, ma because it's, why? It's a thing. It's a real it's thing. A, okay. Yeah. It's, it's. It's the phase. I don't know what it is, but it's that's what it's like the the male equivalent of menopause. Oh, it's not because they want to not use the word man. That's no. Not it's why. just called oh, okay. something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I have a great comment I want to share with you. Yes, you ready? Yeah, <laughs> yes. Okay, I came for Sean, but I'm staying for John. Oh, I agree much more with what John has to say. I love how thoughtful and authentic John is. 
Sean's page has become thirst traps and women throwing themselves at him. With John, I feel I get more real life advice from him. Thank you. Is, is this, you think it's healthy for us to read these things to each other? I mean, what do I you mean, does, did, did, wasn't that nice? For me, but I kind of feel bad. Uh, well, I'm curious how you feel about that because I said, you know, we're both of us, we're sensitive men, you know? Well, first of all, I think it's ridiculous. You're the one posting there's hopeless <laughs> photos of you sweating your life out, deadlifting 700 pounds. Dude, I, I swear that. Uh, so if anyone CrossFit, you know, our shirts come off because that's just the culture of it. Uh, I, I don't I don't have abs, man. I'm not trying to show off anything. I'm just uh, it, when I work out, the shirt has to come off because I feel very claustrophobic. It's just 15 years of doing this. Um, but yes, you're right. I, I post a lot of um, workout workout videos. I mean, you're hot. I mean, it's so you're yeah. the way you your videos aren't like necessarily thirst traps because they're like voiceover where you're talking about like doing something hard and like yeah. overcoming challenges and like showing up and um. But it's like it's way th more thirst trappy than me. So I don't like. I, I think this is a great comment. I think it's a really nice comment because it shows how thoughtful and authentic you are and how. Well, I'll, I'll, of... I'll be honest with you. It, okay, so someone working out or getting sweaty isn't a thirst trap, especially because there's so much of it on social media. Someone in their bed under the sheets in the afternoon, that's yes. a thirst trap. That's what that's... they're talking about with you. <clears throat> I know. You're totally right. I know yeah. that that's what they're talking about. But it's so funny because it's like all it is is my head underneath the blankets. Like it, It's the mood, it's... man. It's like being in a bathtub, you know? <laughs> Where are your hands? What's going on? Like. Dude, uh, one hand is literally holding the phone, That's, <laughs> right. and the other hand is just resting on the blankies. I mean, I don't know? know. I don't know. It, it, but you're in bed. It's, it, it can be – it's like subconsciously intimate. You know, me throwing weights around isn't intimate. It's like, uh, whatever. It's all over. But you, in, under the sheets, that, that's already – it's an intimate setting. It's an it's, intimate setting. It's candlelight, yeah. Well, how did it feel for you to do uh, bed, bedside, in-bed in advice giving? I don't know, but you know what? We should do an episode of this in bed once. Oh, yeah. So we have okay. both of us are in, be in bed. I don't know how we'd set it up, but that'd be great. Well, we just need the boom arms so that we can have the, the mic yeah. In the right place. And we're lying down and under the sheets. Hilarious. Yes. Okay, I'm in. Uh, okay, I think I, I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. And uh, 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 whoever said that, thank you so much. What up? Uh, my my day's going better already. It was sweet. It was yeah, really sweet. sweet. Came for Sean, stayed for John. I mean, that's what a winner. What a winner. Hey, would you, let me ask you this. Would you, what, what's a bigger compliment? Came for Sean, stayed for John, or came for John, but stayed for Sean? Because in a way, the, the, I mean, it's not, a, it's not not a compliment to you because it came for you. You know what I'm saying? I don't care. You got to make yeah. the door. I don't care. They're staying. That's all that matters. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's a, it's a compliment to both of us. Uh, exactly. That's why I yeah. read it. Yeah. And we got to talk about thirst traps a little bit. Yeah. Hey, what, what's a thirst trap for you when you're scrolling? Uh, is it like, like half naked women or no? Yeah, like a like a bikini. Some like a. I think a thirst trap is. <laughs> I think a, th a thirst trap is someone is like an image that's more revealing than you normally see on their account. Mm, oh right. Like okay, you know Todd Barrett's your die yes. nonsense. Yeah. Yes. You don't ever really see much of his life, but every now and then he'll post a selfie of, him, of himself in the bathroom, shredded. Just oh, right, because he he posts yeah. words, yeah. And so then then suddenly he's in a wife. Oh, they're not called wife beaters. Where the oh shit, he's that's in a, a singlet. <laughs> no, he's they're in not a singlet. He's in a tank top. He's in yeah. A tank by top. the by the way, uh, you know, speaking of we could do better. That's that's the those tank tops aren't called wife beaters anymore. They're not called singlets. I don't know what what were those called. They're tank tops. Yeah, but they're they're a different type of. It's like you know, old school like Italian dudes. Like, I know. I, I don't I know. know what they're called. Or I, like I know. they're Long called Beach. white beaters. They're called white beaters. Should we just take that? So I don't know. <laughs> there are some oh. things that. I, anyways, well, people will yeah, tell yeah, us. Yeah. yeah, if they're not white beaters, what are they? Um, that's a thirst trap, right? Because you don't ever see Todd, but yes. every now and then, yes, he'll he'll show you him in a very like sexy pose. And so for me, it's like someone who doesn't normally do sexy poses and then every every now and then you get your like a full-on bikini shot you're like oh whoa okay i'm not used to seeing that oh so I think right that's so that's what the thirst trap is it's not 
It's not I, I, like, yeah, it's not the fact that they're in a bikini. It's the fact that they're not in a bikini, but now they are. Exactly. Every now and then you get to see more than you normally see. You know, I believe you and Todd would do really well on uh, if you guys had OnlyFans. Who's to say I don't? Oh, shit. No, you would, you would advertise it if you did. Because, yeah, I would. Well, sure. Yeah. Uh, hey, man, worse comes worse. That's always there. And um, that's you true. Do, you would do really well. That's I could true. Just tell. Yeah, I know I would. I know I would. But, yeah. you know, sex, that's, that's a form of sex work. And, and I. Uh, been there, not, done that. Been there, done that. And that's not where I want to go, you know. For 100000 okay. a month, you wouldn't go there? You wouldn't Ooh, revisit that oh, for 100000 a month? Oh, I would do it for 100000 a month. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus, I, I would too. A million dollars? And also, you don't have to, I mean, l listen, OnlyFans, it's your channel. You don't have to, you don't have to have sex. You could just show your feet. You could, I know, you know, dude, every just, time I post a photo with my feet, people are like, oh, you can't, you can't show that for free. There's like a thing <laughs> about you can't show feet pictures, pictures of your feet for free. You have to charge for that stuff. All right. So, um, join my sub stack. <laughs> uh sean and i both so so the one part of my body that i that i think is um that i think is nice is uh, is my feet oh it, shit really a, yeah i have i have perfect feet like the oh, like like you know the uh the bars on a uh the bars on a uh, when you have um service on your phone the bars on yeah a, yeah it's yeah. like that boom 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 oh, oh okay just the beautiful angle angle structure it, there's i don't have like a you know one toes no you know, bunions, the, no, no yeah, like, nothing like that. Um, I don't take care of my feet, but they're just, uh, they've always, they're just little, uh, perfect little Asian feet. So KBQ pedicures, <laughs> I want to go get, oh, let's with you. do it. Yeah. 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 Let's do it. And KBQ. Yeah. I think more men should get pedicures. Oh, dude. I like, I love getting Manny Petties. I don't do it very often, but it's a really yeah. fun experience. I go Absolutely. with my friends and we just shoot the shit and grab a people magazine and call it a all right, we're, we're doing that when you're, when you're here. Okay, are you ready? Let's do Let's this. Do it. All right. Okay, this is, here's the surprise. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Hey, y'all. My name is Kirsten. I am 32 years old and from North Carolina. Okay, just first, f just right there. That, that's the new thing, voicemails. Oh, you son of a bitch. Do you like it? I love it. I think that's amazing. Wait, how did you do it where you're not holding? Because what I would, so this would be my version of this. I'd and be playing. Free. I know. Because yeah. you're pro. You're pro and I'm not. Um, <laughs> I glue the wheels to the hubcaps on the model car so it doesn't drive. Yeah. It doesn't roll. So I, I would actually play on speakerphone my phone and I'll hold it up to the, the mic like this. And you, and you would roll your eyes and be like, oh, that's cute, John. But there, you know, there's better ways to do this. So we have a voicemail line now. Oh, that is brilliant. How, how leave... is it? How is it hooked up to to Riverside? Where it's, it's just a, coming. It's a Google Voice number. Yeah. People call it. They leave a voicemail. I read or I listen to the voicemails. I download the ones I like or we like, and then I upload them as a media file in Riverside. Oh my God, that's John. What would I do without you? We would. You would hold the phone up to the microphone. <laughs> and, and you know what we'd get. We we go from what four point nine to four point five, four point six. Maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah. But anyway, so 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 this is this is what I I think we I propose we do this for a little while and see how it goes. Hey, I I like this better, Sean. This is the okay. So so if, we've been experimenting. If you don't know uh, about live callers, uh, again, our one of our favorite shows growing up, Love Line, um, with Doctor Drew and Adam Carolla. Uh, this is the way, Sean. This is this feels uh, professional. And I, and I feel like I'm in control. We, look, you just pause this person's question. When we have live people, I mean, it could just go sideways very fast. They could hijack the conversation and you know, all this kind of stuff. You want to know what's, what's crazy? Um, on radio shows, oftentimes they have people read questions, right? Like they'll, they'll have someone call in and yeah. it's a voice actor. It's oh. a voice, they've hired a voice actor to read a written question and to make it sound like it's a caller. You know, it's funny. Cut to five years. We're doing that in studio. We've hired voice actors. So. Oh, two years. <laughs> two Actually, years. no, because you can't make this. This stuff is too good. You want the real callers. Are you ready no, for this I question? Know, I, no, I'm saying we're not doing voice actors. Nothing about this can be false. John, this question is insane. Are okay, you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. And okay. also, uh, give me the number. We'll talk about it later. But yes, I want to okay, help. I will. Yeah. Oh, so actually, uh, just 
uh, side note on my Instagram, I put, I put the number as my contact information. So on my profile, if you just click the call button, it will dial the voicemail number. It's the, the number is hot. Link is hot. Meaning you could click on it. It's clickable on the pro on the, on your profile. You can put, you can add contact information. And I added the phone number as my oh. phone number. And so if you click call, it will go straight to the voicemail. Oh, yes. It's shit. hot. It's a hot number. Hot <laughs> hey, button. Uh, can we just once say, um, can you leave a message? Just dirty talk. Just dirty talk, and just one one episode. We're just gonna listen to all the all the dirty talk that. Of comes course, through. we could do <laughs> that would be we could amazing. do so so many oh things. People can leave anonymous stories. Like it's this is endless. Yeah, endless, endless. endless. Call, call me daddy. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Okay, let's go. Ready? Let's go. We're gonna go from the top. Hey y'all, my name is Kirsten. I am thirty two years old and from North Carolina. So I'm in a relationship with a guy. We've been together for three years and. Uh, pretty often he leaves a skid mark in my bed and it's where we've had an adult sleepover and then he steps up on the side of the bed I guess his butt cheeks spread apart and he leaves doo-doo on my sheets so uh, my issue is I haven't told him three years later still haven't told him and it's not it's not that I feel unsafe to tell him or that or that I'm scared. It's just that he is a really, really good guy. And, and the issue is I just don't want to hurt his feelings. And maybe that makes me soft. The worst part is that I'm actually, I work in healthcare. And so you'd think that, that I'd be able to talk about doo-doo with him, but maybe that makes me more comfortable with doo-doo on my bed because I work in healthcare. I don't know. Anyway, why do men not know how to wipe their butt? Thanks. <laughs> Hey, first, I love that she calls it doo doo. I think that's the one of the craziest parts is that she calls it doo doo. What what he is wiping his ass with her sheets? What is happening? No, so they're having sex, and then uh, his ass is so dirty that he leaves skid marks on the sheets. Oh my gosh! And she and this Come is on. they've been together for three years, and she is unable to talk to him about it. So if you're having sex uh, and even knowing – even if it smells or something like where there's – any shit around you or remnants of shit is going to instantly turn you off. I mean how can you continue having sex even with that? It's also a health issue. Yeah. Like there's bacteria. You don't want that yeah. in, your, in your vagina. So uh, I mean the – I mean, I, my answer is very easy. She has to uh, address it. She doesn't have to be mean about it. But, you know, maybe the way it, in is through humor. It's like when people have sex and, like, they'll accidentally fart. And then, obviously, the the uncomfortableness turns into, like, humor. They'll make a joke, and then it, it eases the thing. Um, this is serious. Uh, this is definitely something to talk about and say, hey, you know. I, I get it. It's It's embarrassing, I'm assuming, because he's not doing this on purpose. But he should take a fucking shower. Well, there, there's this is a very so I just posted about this on my Instagram and people are going bananas, just <laughs> in, in, insane, insane. Um, so yes, first of all, this is if this is a recurring problem, like this dude does not know how to wipe his ass. I mean, that in itself is hygiene and already unattractive to me. Right, like how, and it's not women's job to like show them how to do this like you if you're an adult you should know how to wipe your ass yeah and i have heard from people this is kind of crazy that straight men some straight men there's some this is discourse that's happening around the inter the internet that straight men um some of them think that it's gay to spend too much time back there cleaning oh my yourself gosh that's horrible that's I mean, that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So that's a problem, right? Like people are so homophobic that like spending any time cleaning your ass is uh, is considered gay to them, right? So that's a problem. Um, this woman just uh, she's too nice, and she's too yeah. nice, right? She doesn't yeah. want to hurt his feelings. Yeah, but like at whose expense? Also, it's in, it's infecting the chemistry of the. I mean, listen, if my partner always smelled like shit, it, it would, I would have to address it because it would start to affect the 
chemistry. The in fact, the intimacy. I would not be able to get aroused. Yeah, I don't. I mean, this whole thing is is wild to me. First of all, yeah. like you got to clean your sheets every time you have sex. <laughs> Who's doing that? No one's doing that unless it's like period sex or like you're or, squ- or squirting. Squirting, yeah, yes. Exactly. Right, yeah. yeah, exactly. By the way, I've got an, ex- an exciting brand partnership that I will be talking about later. Oh, shit. Oh, what yeah. is happening, man? <laughs> wow. You're hitting shit out of the park today. You got to, <laughs> it has to do with squirt. I'm assuming sex toys, vibrators. Yeah, stay tuned. Hey, listen, we, no, we, uh, we, we take, we take, we're open right now. Blank canvas. Um, Blank canvas. Stay tuned. Who, yeah, yeah I mean, the answer is pretty easy. I think everyone knows uh, you do have to have a conversation with this person. You don't have to be mean about it. I would joke about it, but uh, yeah. And maybe this is um, a practice for you because if you feel bad, you don't hurt this person's feelings here. I'm sure in other areas of your life, you know, there's versions of this happening. Yeah. I mean, how do you make yeah. a joke about it? That's what I want to know. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Hey, that, like that's you know? funny. I, 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 my suggestion was take him by the hand, bring him to the bed, pull the blankies out, and say, "What is that?" That's shaming. <laughs> that's know. not funny. That's shaming. <laughs> like grab his face, like throw his face in the skid marks. Yeah, exactly. I would do an exaggerated ill, like ill, like it, like you know what I'm talking about, where it's like over exaggerated and they're just kind of funny humor. <clears throat> Like I if someone farts, you just exaggerate it and it's, hun- right. and it's like, funny. Good, good God. Who, yeah, exactly. Who died? Who yeah, died? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what I would do. I don't know. I would feel, honestly, this has been going on way too long to make a joke about it. This yeah, is maybe a, it's like, a serious, maybe it's like, hey, listen, um, yeah, maybe it is a serious, serious conversation. conversation. I think it's a serious conversation. Yeah. You say, look, honey, this is really hard for me to admit. I'm embarrassed that I didn't bring this up and I, I didn't because I love you so much and I, and you're such a good guy and I'm like, don't want to hurt your feelings. Do not want to hurt your feelings. Yeah. And that's the way to do it. You leave skid marks on the bed and that <laughs> is not okay. Yeah. I, you, dude, I almost feel like she's not, th- this is a fake call. I've never heard of this is, whole, this is like unbelievable. What's funny is that I posted this on Instagram and I got a comment from a woman saying, wow, this woman sounds insufferable. Like just, you know, what's the big deal? Don't people clean their sheets after sex anyways? He's just a sweet dude. Imagine having to... So she she was like coming to his defense. She was shaming the woman. Our but caller. I'm also thinking like, okay, so, you you know, you we have butt cheeks. If you do squats, you've got deep cheeks. And so for the for the skid marks <laughs> even, even to appear on a bed sheet, it, it, it has to be so bad. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, what she says is that he sits on the edge of the bed, and then that must spread the cheeks, and then you get... Oh, you get, it's... Okay. Yeah. By the way, we're calling this guy the Skidmark Bandit. <laughs> or Skidmark Steve. One of those oh, ones. God. Yeah. Uh, Steve definitely can do better. Steve can do better. Also... So can she. So can she. So, so can she. Uh, you know, what yeah. I, I thought was crazy is she's like, I work in healthcare. I should be able to talk about doo-doo. And yeah. it's like, well, you're calling it doo-doo, first of all. Like... <laughs> That's like what you do to it, like when you're talking to a child about poop. She's making it cute. She's making it because she's minimizing it. She's minimizing the, it. She's like subconsciously making it cute. And, and she's infantilizing him a little bit, right? The fact is that like he's a kid. She's treating mm. him like he's a kid who can't oh, handle the truth. Yeah. Might be the dynamic of their relationship. The mother, the mother son thing might be happening. Yeah. 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 Anyway, she I wants to take she, care of him. Yeah. She wants Great to take question. care of him. Great question, right? Yeah, great okay. opener. Nice. Great opener. And then we uh we have a closer. Let's do it. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Oh, you can also have all these other things like sound just... sound sounds and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God. I love it, man. Bells and whistles. This is this is officially where we take our podcast to the next level. Is this yeah, episode. Put sh- all right, let's go. Here's the here's the next one. Hi guys. Uh, my name is Anne. I'm calling from Northern California. I'm 57. I've been single officially for eight years. I'm having a hard time. It's a dating desert, it feels like. <laughs> I feel like I've been at the hardware store looking for bread. As you <laughs> Just not sure, like, what's happening with this age group? Um, where are the good single guys? And how do I kind of get out of this funk like I do all the things I'm active I'm 
out there. I volunteer. I do good things with my friends. I'm not an alcoholic. Um, I'm not, you know, I might have other addictions like paddleboarding, but um, I'm doing all the fun things and keeping myself busy and active. So I don't know what's going on, but it's just hard. Thanks. She sounds like a sweet person. Yeah. Yeah. She does. Um, this is common. I actually hear this a lot right now, uh, mostly from women uh, frustrated that there isn't much out there. Uh, the whole dating landscape and the toxicity of swipe culture, us being turned into baseball cards, um, lots of frustration. This is this is actually why uh, my best-selling book is called Sync on Purpose. It's because the timing of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really know what the answer is. It kind of feels like I hate to throw men under the bus that there are, that, but that it feels like there are more good, quote unquote, good women, women who've done the work, who are like emotionally mm -hmm. available, who are willing to meet people halfway than there are men, right? Well, I mean, it's a combination of that and also women today now having a non negotiable. Like, I'd rather be alone ten, than to settle, you know? And women who are able to provide for themselves and don't need no Right. Man. They don't need, yeah. Yeah. So what do we, how do we help? Well, this is one of those things where I don't have a magic answer. I wish I did. You know, I mean, my answer would be uh, to do um, actually what Sean's doing is Sean is right now living his life and he's focusing on himself and he's uh, out doing amazing things. Uh, he's joining communities, you know, um, also he could also be lonely and he could also be going through, but you know, uh, since you've been single, Sean, uh, I mean, I'm just thinking about all the shit that you've been doing, like Burning Man, dates, uh, you know, uh, the 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 anger <laughs> retreats. You came to L.A. I mean, you started a podcast. You yeah. moved. I mean, yeah. you're, you're very active. You're getting into yeah. fitness. So none of that, none of that in involves you. Um, you're not hitting pause on life until you find quote unquote your your person. <clears throat> No, that's true. Uh, but it also doesn't feel like, and we don't know uh, this person, right? We don't, but it doesn't feel like she's doing it either. It just feels like she has like, no, there's nothing. She's been single for eight years and she's, yeah. she's active. She's volunteering. Yeah. She's working, you know, I mean, who, we don't even know. Wait, where did she, she say she lived? Do you remember that? No. Oh, um, shoot. I forget. Um, Oh, she lives in Northern California. Mm. Yeah, it's like, it's one thing if you're living in some tiny little town and you know everybody and there are no right. dating options. Right. It's a different story if you're like in an area where there's a lot of people. But I don't know. I don't know how to solve this either other than to like grieve uh, the you life that you know what this you is? thought you were going to have. What? So the, the, what she's talking about, um, and I might sound a little dramatic, it's actually an epidemic, what's happening. The disconnect of um, people who are working on themselves and want something better, different, um, and then other people who are, you know, at home playing video games and <laughs> sleeping, like I don't, just doing nothing with their lives. Uh, the 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 uh, um, there's there's a lot of video. There, there's a funny video, a reel of a woman who's like she has all these uh, she she has all these peanuts that represent single men, and she starts saying like, okay. Men who are, you know, um, whatever, uh, non-abusive, and she takes them out. And men who are working on themselves takes them out. By the time she gets to, like, you know, someone that she would consider, it's, it's like two peanuts. Mm. And then she's like, now take these two peanuts and spread them acro across the globe. <laughs> it's like nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And so, fuck, I mean, I, I don't know. I get it. And listen, when I was single, uh, and I've been single many times, uh, lonely, frustrated, uh, normal feelings. Like, am, am, do people even like me? Am I going to find someone? How do I find someone? Um, uh, sexually frustrated, lots of coconut oil, you know, on Friday nights. Ooh. And better than lotion. Coconut soft oil, Sean. Pe soft penis. Uh, dolphin. I'm a Korean dolphin. Okay. No Is hair. Soft? Well, no hair. hairless, hairless, yeah. Yeah, hairless um, and smooth, nice. So, yeah, I don't know. I've been there. Um, I've been there in my own. Sean's there now. Yeah, I'm there now. Uh, the weird thing, I mean, it's different for me because this is like, it, 
Actually, I've always wanted to ask you this. Do people hit on you on Instagram? Uh, I think a lot more people hit on you than me. I know, I know that to be true because I get hit on. <laughs> you don't have to rub it in, Sean. You don't have to no, rub it in. No, it's it's not that. It's just that it's like it's. It, I just get a lot of of yeah. I get I get a lot of interest from strangers on the internet. But I'm curious, does that happen to you? Like, do are people um, DMing you and asking you to go out and stuff? No, 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 no. It it, it has in the past uh, when I was single a little bit, but uh, no, not not. I don't have those opportunities. I wasn't trying to rub it in. Well, you know, like they say, they come for Sean. But they stay for John. Yeah. But they come for you. <laughs> <laughs> they come for me. <laughs> yeah, I could I mean, listen, listen, you're you're single, you're you seem like uh, you know, you're working on yourself, you're uh, you know, you're attractive, you're the uh the EQ is very high, you're very personable, you're vulnerable. So I feel like you check all the boxes, you know. Are we talking about me or Anne? You. Oh. Yeah, no, that's I'm saying that's why you get a lot of DMs. Oh yeah, and I'm and yeah. I'm single. Yeah, and you're single, right? That's single, exactly. Yeah. And they're yeah. just like shooting their shot. I thought we were we were talking about we were you were like now talking to Anne, and I was like, oh, that's so sweet. It's like it's a really nice message. But yeah, uh, <laughs> Anne sounds lovely. Anne does sound lovely, and it does sound like she's doing kind of everything. And unfortunately, there are just less. I hate to say, are there less good men out there? Um, every female per- friend I know would, would say hundred percent. Yes. Okay. But That's I also don't, I don't want to buy, I don't want to buy into that because I'm also protective of men in a way. I know, you know? me too. I, I don't, don't want to like, yeah. I also, I, listen, I know a lot of amazing men. Do we set him up with Anne? Maybe, maybe. We, maybe <laughs> People we have help. been saying that we should do a, uh, a matchmaking. A matchmaking, service. that would be funny. Yeah. That'd be good. Cause you have a lot of dudes, right? On your, it's, your... it's half and half. It was half uh, half. a lot of women, and now a lot, a lot. Yeah, it's half and half now. Are you getting more dudes? Did you have more women before? Yeah, it was. It was like you. It was a lot of women um, post divorce talking uh-huh. about love and dating, and then now I'm getting more dudes because because started... I think because of miserable fucks because that the, that book a lot of men related to being miserable. Oh, and yeah. the CrossFit, I think maybe I don't know. Or the motorcycles. Like yeah, I got to do more manly things. I'm wearing like short shorts. Hey, uh, I'm the, prancing the, around Montreal, you know, li- listen, what, 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 what does manly look like? I mean, it, manly doesn't have to look like, uh, lifting weights and manly, manly can be anything. What is manly? You are manly. I feel manly. Oh, good. Cause you said yeah. that to start doing more manly things. You're already doing manly things. I'm manly, but up. colorful. I'm like prance, prancing manly, like a more prancy version. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, I want to say something to you before we leave. Sure. We talked about uh, doing this podcast. We talked about uh, answering calls. Uh, we had this um, kind of like vision. We had this, this, you know, I would say dream. We started executing it. We promised each other. I think it was 12 episodes. Yeah. Uh, I think we're on episode nine. Yeah. And I want to thank you because you're giving my body the experience of what it would like to have a real call-in show. Oh, nice. So like today, the way that you set it up and there's like a live caller and you're doing it pro where we could hear their voice and it's legit. And it's like a, like a fun call, like the shit one. And then, uh, you know, this, the serious call, um, it feels like, I feel like we have a real, I feel like we have, I know we have dreams of being in the studio, but I feel like we have created we have manifested. We talked about it, and now we executed it. And I'm saying this also uh, for listeners to know, like, I really believe in giving your body the experience. Give, so, so we're thinking about it, you know, we're dreaming about it, we're logic, how do we execute this? But then, like, right now in this moment, not missing this moment and saying, oh, my body feels like we created a call-in show. Mm-hmm. This is the first episode where I feel that in my body. And I think what happens I think the universe starts to meet us halfway. And so I think we'll start to attract and build and grow uh, because now uh, it's not just logic. Now it's here. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. That feels really yeah. nice to receive. Yeah. Thank you for that. And you, and you, on, you created that, you know? Well, we, without you asking me to do a podcast together, this wouldn't be here. Yeah. So we created it. Yeah. I love it. Um, just to touch on that, giving your body the experience like i always thought i wanted to live in the woods 
and mm. to ski bike and climb and have a cabin. Yeah. And I did that. I moved. I went to Flagstaff. I bought a house. I did that whole thing and I hated it. Yeah. Your body said, no, this is not right. Like, logically, I my yeah. it, you made, it made sense. Yeah. And I gave my body the experience. And then I was like, no, fuck that. I came back to Montreal and my body's screaming for joy. Yeah, and I think the lesson here is um, everyone drop into your bodies and listen to your body. Uh, give your body the new experience to eclipse the old, um, especially if you've been in anything toxic like relationships. It's not going to be like a logical process. It's going to be your body finally feeling safe that you can show love and receive love. And oh my God, the sky's not falling or you're not going to get hurt or no one's going to leave you. You have to give your body that experience. It's not a logical thing. I love that. Yeah. Two more things. Real quick. Yes. Yes. Uh, I have heard from several people. They have said, yes. I have never wanted more than one episode per week. I've never wanted that no. until this podcast. Hmm? Also, I have never wanted more than an hour of podcasts until this podcast. Wow. Sean, you're such a great cheerleader. You're such a great cheerleader. I love this. Not like fake cheerleading. <laughs> it's real like shit. Sean goes into the trenches, digs up compliments or critiques they're they're real he's not making this shit up yeah and he brings them here that, 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 that's amazing that's amazing that's because i need a girlfriend because i have too much time on my hands. <laughs> <laughs> that's also probably why i get a lot of proposals because i keep saying i need a girlfriend yes because you're asking for the proposals so they're I'm manifesting i'm yeah. manifesting yeah. like you said hey, right you may um you may stumble upon uh, a caller and there might be, uh, it might be the issue when we do the, uh, the sex talk and they're all calling in and, and then, uh, so suddenly you, you might be going out with someone who knows. Maybe you yeah. might meet someone on the show. We have great callers. So yeah, I love, I love our community. So, uh, our new, I think the new motto for the podcast should be come for Sean, stay for John. <laughs> I don't know. It just sounds arrogant, but, uh, yeah, let's, let's keep that to ourselves. Okay. Um, Okay. But yes, I am going to advertise the number. Hey, wait, wait. Why don't we advertise it right now? Hold on. I just have to pull it up. I don't know what the phone number is. It's like yes. a Google voice number. I didn't, I didn't even realize. Uh, You're so good. You're so good at this. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, hold on. So I uh, let me buy, buy some time. If you want to call, and here's the thing about this number, you could leave a voicemail, right? So you're not going to talk to anyone live, which makes it safe for you. Call and leave a message. Leave your question. Uh, leave your comments. Leave anything you want, and we will listen to them. And uh, keep it keep it to a minute, please. Yeah, yeah, not 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 a thirty minute vent about what's frustrating in your life. One minute, minute, one minute. Um, six five seven five four nine one zero zero one. Hey, listen, you go a minute and a half. It's okay. We'll listen, but not like not five minutes. Yeah, just keep it keep it tight. Keep it short. Keep it tight. Keep it tight. Yeah. Give give us the highlights. What do we really need to know? Yeah. Six five seven five four nine one zero zero one, or go to my Instagram and there's a little button there that says call. Just click it on my on my bio. Click call. Yeah. And John, I'm gonna blast it all over my my stories as well. And uh, hey, you know, reminder to everyone: wash your ass. Just be safe. Just wash your oh, ass. Just dude, wash your get ass. A, get a bidet. Get a bidet. Yeah, I was gonna say that. So I have a bidet. And uh, get a bidet. Yeah, it's actually you start to get addicted to the feeling of that. It's just. Uh, you know, Americans are the only ones that use paper. Well, not the only ones. There's, everyone's using paper. Oh, I thought Americans were the... I, I thought most people in the world uh, use bidets, water. No, there's a lot of people use bidets, but yeah. there's toilet paper also. Yes. So, yeah, use bidets, and um, you can stop wiping when the paper is no longer brown. <laughs> okay. Before it turns red. Oh my Bef god! Do I wipe my ass like five times? That's exactly what I do. I wipe until it's no longer brown. That's you that's a great that's, Sean, that's great. Let's just that's leave it. people on that one. So right? simple. Thank okay. you for listening. Be well. Have a beautiful week. You too.